Ryan Elber is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Here with a lot to talk about today. Mike's been holding down the fort one way or the other in the last couple of days. We are live here today, everyone. And if you'd like to, uh, to contact us, 425-780-7566 is the phone number. What we're going to do here is, I'm sure Mike talked about the show, I've talked about the show, I think everyone knows the results of the show. I think most people are aware Adam Cole and Brian Danielson and Ruby Soho all debuted for AEW. So I will give you, Mike, the opportunity here to ask me questions about whatever happened on the weekend. I'll read some uh, text here as well. Whatever you guys want to know about the weekend... Ask me, and I'll I'll tell you what I know. How's that sound? Okay, that's fine. When can I begin? Now, go for it. What are you waiting for? What the hell were you wearing on your feet when you were uh, battling of all that of mixer? the questions? We have to start with my footwear. Ask a yeah. real question. That that is a real question, considering you started the show hyping their up the hemp fact that you're going Vibram to be having your five fingers, and they're fantastic. And if you all wore them, you would shut up about them. But most of you are too cowardly to put them on your feet. Hemp, and what, thus, five fingers? What are they? Is this, is this the same group that made fingers. the belt for Daniel Bryan? Uh, bro, we got a million people here, and you're asking about shoes. Let's ask a real question. Oh, okay, Brian. What would you like me to ask you since you want me to all set right, you I'll up I'll go with through all these here. Please do. I'll all let you ask the people to ask you questions. What did you... Did you see the Danhausen War Horse Effie and Dan the Dad versus Imposter Danhausen's match at Black Label Pro? Yes, I did. I went to Black Label Pro. I went to the GCW show. I went to All Out, and uh, I actually had zero plans to go to Rampage, because I think when we got the the tickets for the flight, I wasn't going to make it in time for Rampage. And uh, I got on the airplane. I don't know if you guys are aware of this story or not, but we we left late. And the pilot, the man who flies the airplane, he said, well, we're leaving late, but we're going to fly faster. I thought that was ridiculous. And in fact, we flew faster because we left 25 minutes late and arrived seven minutes early, which begs the question, why don't you always go that fast? What are we waiting for here? So I landed and I, I was able, thanks to Edmund Tony to immediately get in a car, and I made it in time to see the main event of Rampage. So I got to see that, and that was that was very exciting. But yes, the uh, the the Danhausen match, they did the uh, the Pee Wee Herman dance, and uh, you can ask Danhausen about this; he he'd know better. But you know, Danhausen doesn't want to kill a great gimmick, so I don't know how long you'll be seeing the the Pee Wee Herman dance. But they decided to do it here, and the place just went crazy <laughs> for that spot. So I did. Well, he's very good, but he's very evil as well, too. Isn't that kind of a very well, good, be, very evil dance? He'll be very evil when he stops doing it. Oh. But yeah, I saw that. I saw uh, Buddy Wayne's 16-year-old son, Nick Wayne, wrestle. And uh, he's great. Whew. I didn't get Man. to see him in the, the latter match, the name of which I cannot mention here. Ha! But he, he, was, uh, he was at the GCW show last night, as was... Uh, the surprise uh, return of John Moxley, who ended up winning the GCW title and then doing a stare down with that dastardly Nick Cage, and uh, I I knew I knew that Moxley was there, and uh, they did the mm -hmm. War Games match, and then after the War Games match, they were going to do the the open challenge for the GCW title with the former Zack Ryder, Matt Cardona's champion. And I was sitting there, and I, I knew who it was going to be, but I knew they were going to do some gimmick first. And so they brought out Frank the Clown to be his opponent. And when they introduced Frank the Clown, someone needs to turn off their car alarm. But when they introduced Frank the Clown, he starts coming down to the ring... Might be around here. And I looked around the building, and there was probably 1,500 people here in this building. And it wasn't it wasn't a ton of people, but about, I'd say, 25, 30 people walked out. And I thought, 
You've got to be kidding me. Like, it's one thing. You're telling me that you thought that if the 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 secret opponent of Matt Cardona was Frank the Clown, they wouldn't have done that before the War Games match? I mean, it's Rookies. like common sense. It's common sense. <laughs> if you're doing something after the War Games match, it has to be bigger than War Games, which, God bless him, is not Frank the Clown. So anyway, Frank the Clown comes out and he gets killed. And then all of these these druids come out. And one of these druids starts doing his his dance, and it's the John Moxley dance, and the place goes crazy. You're telling me you didn't think it was going to be G Raver? And he grabs Matt Cardona and he gives him the Death Rider, and the place goes hog wild. And I got a video because I knew it was going to be Moxley, so I went way to the back to take my video because I wanted to make sure that you could see all of the the little people like this all of a sudden go ah like that, and they did. So if you haven't seen it, it's on my Twitter if you want to see just people totally losing their minds. So he won, and then he uh, he beat he beat uh, Cardone. He won the title. Then he faced off with Nick Gage. And if you think about all of the stories of All Out Weekend, and you see you see uh, you know Tony Khan at the press conference. I mean, never once on Christmas morning have I seen a child as excited as Tony Khan was at the end of of that show. And you know Adam Cole's always happy, but he's got a smile so big, like it's bigger than his face. And Ruby Soho's practically in tears, and everyone's just like, they're so happy. And Tony's at the press conference, and he just keeps thanking CM Punk. He's like, I just want to thank you. Like, we're where we are because of you. And CM Punk goes, no, you're not. And he goes, no, seriously, like, I just want to thank you so much for being here. I mean, we wouldn't be where we are if it w-. And And Punk finally goes, I got to go. And he stood up and he left. He was just done. He couldn't take any more of this praise from Tony. But anyway, all these happy people, John Moxie doesn't like to sell it. Well, I'd be surprised if there was truly a happier man than John Moxley. John Moxley got to go out there on a GCW show. He got to go. Uh, I mean, there's just shards of glass everywhere from the from the war games. So like, he did like one spot, and he's just got puncture holes all over his back. And then he's going to get to do a match with Nick Gage. Like, it couldn't be happier to be able to do that match for the GCW title. Then he shows up the next day and has a dream match with, uh, trust me, you may not think it was a dream match, but for, for Moxley, that match with Kojima, holy smokes. And then afterwards, Suzuki comes out. And granted, he's wrestled Suzuki before, but he's going to get to wrestle Suzuki in his homecoming, in his hometown on Wednesday night on Dynamite. This bro, I mean, what a life he's living. He is living the best John Moxley life that he could live right now. So it was a lot of fun, exciting stuff, and uh, and I got to see most of it. Did you congratulate your former tag team partner for having a hell of a weekend? Yeah, I saw I saw filthy all weekend. My my one great regret from the weekend is when the Black Label show was over. We just decided we were going to walk back to the hotel because it's like a half mile. And we start walking, and it starts raining. It's just raining, and Tom's there. It's like the two of us walking by ourselves on the sidewalk, and Filthy's got no shirt on. And so I got a picture of him holding his belt up, walking back to the hotel, and and somebody had tweeted, I can't believe you didn't do the slow-motion victory run. And I thought, ah, that would have been the greatest. You two on the beach in Chicago, because, folks, there is actually a beach in Chicago. You guys running and doing the the Rocky Apollo? Oh, my God. There certainly was no beach where we were at. Well, not where you were at, I hear we weren't in the real Chicago. Is that true? Uh, Apparently, from what you were eating, that was obviously the case. Oh, get out of here. All you... uh, I can eat whatever I want, and so can you. (laughs) I wouldn't put it on my Twitter and, you know, beg to get yeah, there's roasted a lot you, like you there's did. There's a lot you wouldn't put on your Twitter uh-huh. because you're scared. Is think, that right? I think I'm scared of tweeting a picture of a hot dog with ketchup on it where you can see my shoes in the background. No, but uh, you do show yourself being scared of your wife because you're willing to throw that mixer up against a tree, but you're not throwing it in that water there, are you? I was not going to throw that mixer in the water. Are you kidding me? Mm. Was... Yeah. Too bad nobody picked you up and threw you at Cardona on uh, Saturday night. This person says you versus the Mixer was a seven-star match. We'll find out tonight when Granny reviews it. There's profanity. It wasn't in Japan. So it's probably going to get like a four because of the lewd, inappropriate language. (laughs) Lewd. (laughs) I'll tweet it out here in a moment. Observer Live. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, 
all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.